Hi there, Yannick speaking. Today we are uh, releasing version 1.1 of 4 SEO, our uh, Joomla SEO extension. And its main feature is to include the uh, measurement of uh, uh, Google's new way of measuring speed, Core Web Vitals. And so I thought this would be a good opportunity to talk about what uh, Core Web Vitals are and how Google includes uh, measuring speed in their ranking algorithm. So I've prepared a small talk about that and I'm going to go through that now. So how does Google uh, use speed when uh, ranking pages? And actually, does it matter for you? So uh, using speed in ranking results is something Google has been doing for years. They started uh, in 20, about, or at least they started communicating about it at the start of 2018. The way they were doing it at the time was to measure how fast your site was responding to the server when they were crawling and analyzing a page. It was simple at first, how much time exactly before the, your site responded. And this was called the TTFB, the time to first byte. And then at some points, they also added a measure of interactivity when did the page starting to be, uh, you, you were starting to be able to interact with the page. Uh, obviously, that was not a really real world experience. And it was uh, also uh, having a very limited impact on ranking. So about a year ago, a bit more than a year ago, they came up with a new way of measuring speed and including that into their um, ranking strategy. Um, this is called the page experience update. And it has several parts. The, the parts we are most familiar with and that actually already existed was were these ones. Uh, a site had to be mobile friendly. It has to be safe when browsing it, meaning it doesn't have to have to include any malware or virus. It was supposed to be uh, running over HTTPS so as not to leak uh, data to third parties. And it was supposed to not have intrusive interstitials. Those are pages that uh, come in front of the actual content when you're trying to view a page, like typically uh, GDPR uh, banners or any kind of uh, uh, newsletter or subscription, dialogue, things like that. So these were uh, four things where uh, you could have either a good mark or a bad mark. But the really uh, interesting part with this one it's really, that's the, really the part that's related to speed. And so the key thing in that uh, May 2020 uh, announcement was that all these were going to be search signals for the page experience, for things that were to be included in the ranking uh, strategy. So why are we talking about it just now? And because of the pandemic, that update was postponed um, from last year to the middle of June. So like a few days ago, I'm recording this, uh, mid-June, a few days ago, they started implementing and rolling out this update to uh, all users across the world. And it will be a progressive rollout until the end of August. Uh, and they also updated the Search Console page speed site, which is a service to uh, analyze uh, website pages speed and Lighthouse, which is a, a part of the uh, Chrome uh, developer tools suite. They updated all that. They updated all that to include the core web vitals. Um, I just want to say a word about AMP because there's something changing about AMP due to this uh, to this update. Um, as of like a few days before, a few days ago, uh, AMP is not mandatory anymore to be included in top stories in Google search results. Uh, that said, uh, AMP as a, an HTML framework is still a very good way to pass the Core Web Vitals to achieve good grades on the Core Web Vitals speed measurements. And it's also important to note that websites which use uh, AMP, uh, this is the AMP page that will be used to uh, evaluate their speed and their, and their grades when looking at the Core Web Vitals. So there might be a good advantage here. But again, uh, it's not mandatory anymore to be included in the top stories, so that importance. Um, so, uh, Core Web Vitals, what is that? Well, it's a new way of measuring performance. Um, and the key aspect of it is that it wants to be more realistic. It wants to be based on 
um, the actual experience, the speed experience of actual users. Uh, we'll see how they uh, achieve that. And obviously, equality is important that it's a ranking factor, and we'll discuss that as well. Uh, the core web vitals are today uh, three numbers. Um, they are called LCP, FID, and CLS, largest contentful paint, uh, first input delay, and community layout shift. And each of these three numbers have a, for them, for each of them, uh, a, a, a threshold has been defined. If you're below that, you're good. If you're above that value, then you're not as, you're not as good and you don't pass. Uh, it's important to note that these these, this, these are um, today's Core Web Vitals numbers, and they might change. They have already changed a little bit in the way they are, have, uh, they are computed. So in the future, like next year, they are supposed to review these numbers, and maybe they're going to change the either the way they are computed, or maybe add more numbers, or, or remove some. So what are they exactly? Well, LCP, Largest Contentful Paint, evaluates the, the your website performance when loading so it measure it tries to measure how much time uh, your your site require or a page requires to display the largest element on a given page and this means this is taken from the moment you click on a link to that particular page or you try to you press enter when loading it in your browser to the time the largest thing on that page is actually displayed and visible for the for the user. Uh, the second the second uh, number is called feed first input delay, and it measures how much time does it take for your page to be to become interactive. If your page has loaded very fast and it has uh, I don't know a button or or a form where you can enter things, uh, it's one thing if it loads very fast. If I have to wait. Uh, after clicking that particular button on the page uh, one second before your page actually reacts and does something, then it, it's actually slow. So FID is trying to measure that. And the third value is called uh, the cumulative layout shift, which is CLS. And that's the one I prefer. It's actually uh, measure the uh, visual stability on the page. And that means uh, when you arrive on a page and it loads and you have a link on it and you want to click on it, but because there is either an ad loading or an, uh, a large image loading somewhere mm -hmm. and that image loads and it pushes down what you're actually reading or the link you are going to, to click on. And you end up uh, either having to scroll down to get back to what you were reading, or maybe you click and you click on something you didn't want to click on, typically an ad. So I just hate that. And CLS is a way, uh, is a number that characterizes uh, how much the, the page content is moving around after the page has loaded. So how, how can Google actually measure that? Well, they are using data from what's called the Chrome User Experience Program, and this is uh, this is uh, navigation data, real life navigation data coming from people using Chrome uh, who accepted to send navigation data to anonymized, of course, navigation data to Google. So they use actual users visiting your site and other sites to record how fast your site was displayed when these people went and visited it. Um, this data is aggregated over 28 days, so it's not moving very fast and you, you, it needs a bit of time before collecting enough data. And uh, it's only the year seven, what's called the 75th uh, percentile set of data that's used. It means that if you say you have a, an FID uh, a loading time of uh, two seconds, it means that at least 75% of the visitors to your site ha did have uh, loading faster than two seconds. And then, as you can guess, there are many pages for many sites which won't have uh, enough data, not actual users visiting them, uh, participating in the, in the Chrome User Experience Program. So in that case, uh, Google is grouping uh, similar page to pages together. They are going to extrapolate the performance uh, values from what they have on other pages that they think are similar. Uh, and of course, sometimes there won't be any score at all. The important thing in the way they want to measure uh, Core Web Vitals is that they measure what visitors actually see 
you're probably familiar with tools that exist that that can tell you how fast your website is and and what's making it slow. They are quite useful when you want to diagnose problems, but uh, they don't actually. Uh, they are very much differ from what uh, Google is using because that's just your experience, the way your internet speed is working, your your particular device, the, the device you are using is is how fast it is or or, or so on, but. The core of vitals is really about what your visitors are experiencing. Um, the only real life data you can get about what Google is seeing is the, the information provided in the search console. That's where you'll find uh, the evaluation that uh, Google is making about, about your pages. So now, how is this information used? The three numbers. Uh, so the important thing to know is that it's a score per page. So it's really each page has a grade. Uh, it's applied to mobile and desktop. Previously in 2018, uh, speed uh, evaluation was only applied to mobile devices. Now, speed is important for any kind of content. Uh, these three numbers are used separately. It means you can be good for uh, largest contentful paint and bad for CLS. You'll have just less bonus. If, if you fail on one, but you can still be good on another one. And lastly, and very importantly, success or failure is binary. You're below the, um, the grade required to pass or you're above. If you're below, uh, in this example here, uh, that's for um, the um, uh, LCP, the threshold has been set at 2.5 seconds. If you are below or at 2.5 seconds to load a given page, your, your page passes. And if, you, if your pages load in 0.5 or 0.3 seconds, doesn't matter, as long as you're, it's not any better than uh, loading in 2.5 seconds. You have to maybe keep that in mind uh, when trying to optimize. So does it matter? Well, I'd say uh, probably not much, but in some cases it will matter a lot. So the, the point here is that the weight of this factor is limited, but Google itself presents it as a tiebreaker. If there are multiple pages with about the same quality, the same content, and that provide a good answer to the searcher request, uh, maybe the one with uh, a good page, page experience, therefore a good speed, will be placed a, a little bit above the one without. So page experience update and the core web vitals uh, scores will be important if you're in a field that is very competitive. When there are a lot of tie breaks, maybe a lot of pages with about the same quality. And the other thing to keep in mind is that uh, it will become more important. Um, that's what they say, and I believe it will become more important as time as time goes by. I don't have to say it again, but yeah, there are there are many um, pages and uh, comments on the web for that. But it's good for your visitors. There are some very uh, famous uh, quotes from Amazon saying that for uh, with every 100 milliseconds of speed gain, they are making so many millions more. Uh, and that applies to everything. So what should we do about that? And I believe the first thing to do is to assess the situation. Are you good or are you not? Like I said before, the, the, the data about Core Web Vitals measurement is in the search console. That's, that's the one Google is going to use. But uh, I just wanted to, like I said at the start, for SEO has now the ability to measure Core Web Vitals, uh, real Core Web Vitals. So you can use that too. The um, search console has been uh, updated to include a page experience and core web vitals uh, report. And that's where you can see whether you have uh, the, your number of um, failing URLs and good URLs. Now you can click on that and you get a more detailed view. And uh, when you get to a given URL, you'll get the actual numbers. That's where you can see what kind of problems you have uh, on a given page and what you need to fix. Now, let me show you how it looks uh, inside of 4SEO. And in 4SEO, if you select on the pages page, uh, the um, speed failing uh, selector, then you'll see a list of all your pages, which have at least one of the um, 
core web vitals value failing in that case we have two pages here uh, the frequent frequent uh, questions areas which are failing on the cumulative layout, layout shift and it's not surprising because these pages are, have uh, accordions uh, type of display and of course it means they are moving around when when loaded so what can you do if you want to go further and analyze why you have a problem or what do you do if you don't actually have any data available to you yet for instance there has not been 28 days of data or something like that or it's a new site or you're developing your site locally well you can use tools such as our uh, chrome extension called seo info chrome and firefox extension called seo info um, you can use uh, Lighthouse, which is a service by, um, which is sorry, which is a part of the um, uh, Chrome Edge and the, the Chrome family of uh, browsers development tools. Uh, it's a tab there, and you can um, you can have information. Uh, I'll show you that in a minute. And or you can use the PageSpeed Insight uh, service. Uh, uh, the address is on the uh, slide here uh, to analyze a given page. Like I said before, these tools are useful to get actual information, but uh, they are one shot. They are they are not real world conditions. They are showing your own conditions, your own uh, systems, your own internet speed, but not what your users are experiencing. And and this is what Core Web Vitals is about. So typically, this is what you'll see when using um, Lighthouse or PageSpeed. Uh, you'll get a, you you will get the actual number. Uh, numbers measured here plus some analysis here telling you obviously or hopefully uh, useful information to help you improve things for instance here probably can't see it that well but this is telling us which element on that particular page is the largest uh, content element uh, and that's the one google is using to measure uh, your lcp not just content full paint value so if you want to improve that value uh, then you need to either make this piece of content load faster or maybe breaking down in breaking down in in two pieces so they are smaller well there are, there are options there and we're going to to go into that so next step after you have assessed the situation is if you need to do something because you may not need to do something about that uh, what are your options when you want to fix uh, largest contentful paint. The f your first bet, but you're probably already using that, is to enable the Joomla cache, um, either partial in the global configuration or the full page uh, caching. Uh, that's the one you get with uh, when enabling the uh, Joomla cache system plugin. You can also, it's the same family of solutions, but you can also use a CDN, a content delivery network, to speed up the delivery of assets, images, JavaScript, CSS. Uh, another very important point is to uh, reduce the image size, re reduce the size, reduce the resolution, and use uh, compressors. There are many different ways to do that, so I won't get into that, but uh, reduce the image sizes and compress them. Uh, one thing that's often overlooked, but that's really easy and often a very efficient way, is just to get a faster, a faster server. Uh, you might have to spend a few more uh, money, a little bit more money per month, but often it's an easy win. Um, another thing you might want to do that will affect the uh, largest contentful paint is to reduce the amount of CSS and JavaScript on each page because you have to download all these CSS and JavaScript. I would advise to not group every CSS and JavaScript in, in bundle files because it's much better to reduce them and load the only the required CSS or JavaScript on each page. And this is uh, now that most, if not all servers are running HTTP2, uh, it's more efficient anyway. And like I mentioned earlier, you can identify the largest element on the page and just try to make it smaller, be it an image or being a, a, a bit of text, a blob of text, uh, try to make it smaller. Now, what if you want to improve or you need to improve your interactivity measurement? The only thing here that you can do or that causes issues is the amount of JavaScript 
uh, on a page. Try to reduce uh, the, the volume, the amount of, uh, of JavaScript loading on page. Maybe uh, break down the JavaScript in multiple files so that each page only gets the JavaScript they, 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 they require. Mm -hmm. Also, the amount of something, but try also maybe, uh, and that gets really tricky, uh, to reduce how much work the JavaScript is doing. So that's really technical, but uh, that's the only only other approach. I, I would argue that the uh, the FID is probably not the the the, the place where you'll have uh, you'll have problems. Uh, well, what will probably uh, cause more issues is the CLS, the visual stability, because it's so easy to break that. So, what can you do about that? Well, there are very simple things you can do, and the simplest thing is to set a width and height on most elements images, iframes, and any ads you may be using. Just set an actual width and height attribute on that. Uh, that doesn't go against uh, responsive images or anything like that. It it's just tells the browser what are the actual dimensions of the image, and from that they can uh, reserve, if you will, the space needed for it. And that will help a lot with the CLS value something that you may not be doing but extensions might be doing for you is to insert content content with javascript after the the page has started loading so you want to avoid that unless the inserting uh, content is the result of the user clicking on a button or something like that that's will not be a problem uh, with cls another way where depending on your website you, there, there might be something to gain is how you load uh, fonts. You might want to look into uh, reducing the number of fonts you're using on any given page and uh, maybe try to optimize the way you're, you're loading them. So, in short, what do we need to do? We need to assess now what's happening in terms of uh, performance on your website. It might be very important to you or not at all. It will be important if you're in a competitive field, and I would argue that most of us are in actually competitive fields where there are always options for searchers to find content. So it's probably somewhat important to you. Keep in mind that any work you put into improving your Core Web Vitals scores is also an improvement for your visitors. People will enjoy uh, using your website if it's faster, if it's um, if its content is not moving around all the time. Uh, the cave hat here is that it can be for some from for some factors, it can be really technical. Everything dealing with JavaScript uh, improvement, loading fonts faster, and things like that can be really technical. So it's quite nice if you can do it that yourself feel free to uh, reach out to specialists to be able to do that to help you there uh, there are always uh, things you can do right away like using cache cdn and using smaller images compressing them optimizing and assigning width and eight to all the the assets uh, you're using on your pages I just wanted to mention uh, a few channels here, communication channel, where you may want to uh, um, look for uh, additional or up to updated information. These are either YouTube or Google uh, originated channels, YouTube or Twitter, and also a couple of uh, interesting um, Twitter accounts and podcasts that you can follow to stay in touch. Okay, that's it for now. I hope uh, this was uh, or this will be useful to you. Thanks for watching.